Okay, hello students. <clears throat> so, we are going to start with a very important topic today. Okay, the topic for the day is infectious diseases. Okay, so what are we going to study? Infectious diseases. Now, I am sure uh, you must have seen this topic, you must have seen this chapter in textbook of Park. And the chapter appears to be very huge, okay? But trust me, the chapter is beautifully written. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tell you what is important for you from that, from that chapter in your book. What you should know, what are the diseases that you need to stress upon, what would be asked for your university examinations and definitely for your entrance examinations. Okay, so let us start. Now, we'll be discussing this chapter of infectious diseases in a series of lecture. Uh, the first lecture is very simple. We'll try to understand the definition of infectious diseases. We'll try to understand certain common terms that are used when we study this chapter of infectious diseases. And also we're going to see just a, a broad basic uh, baseline of the types of infectious diseases. Okay? So the first thing is what is the definition of infectious diseases? Now the definition is itself in the topic infectious so those diseases which are infectious in origin all right so if you study if somebody asks you about the technical definition what are you going to write so the technical definition of infectious diseases is let's use a different color for it okay it is illnesses <coughs> okay illnesses caused by okay illnesses caused by a specific, all right, specific infectious agent. Now, that infectious agent could be anything. It could be a bacteria. It could be a fungi. It could be a parasite. It could be a virus, anything. Okay, so illnesses caused by a specific infectious agent which could be anything, okay, it could be a bacteria, it could be a fungi, it could be a parasite, a virus, or it's toxic product, okay, that results from, okay, transmission, just uh, read the definition as I'm writing it, okay, so that results from the transmission of that agent, or its product <clears throat> okay we'll use a separate color for the next part from an infected person animal <clears throat> from an infected person animal or reservoir okay let's use a separate color again to a susceptible host okay either directly okay either directly or indirectly through a through an or a intermediate plant or animal host okay or vector or inanimate environment all right so this is what is the definition of infectious diseases okay or infect uh, or the other word for infectious diseases could also be Communicable diseases. All right. So let's read the definition again. What have I written? It is an illness which is caused by a specific infectious agent. Not just the agent. It can also be caused by the tox or by its toxic products. And this illness results from transmission of that agent or its product from an infected person, it could be an infected person, it could be from an infected animal or reservoir 
to whom to whom does the infection go to a susceptible host it could either transmit directly or indirectly okay through an intermediate plant or animal host or vector or inanimate environment so it's very simple infectious diseases or communicable diseases are illnesses that are caused by a specific infectious agent or its toxins which are transmitted from an infected person to a susceptible host okay to a susceptible host it could either transmit directly or indirectly to get through an indeterminate plant animal host or vector on inanimate environment to a infectious person say it get, gets transmitted that infectious person could not necessarily a person it could also be an animal or reservoir it goes to another person <clears throat> either directly or indirectly indirectly it could also go through some animal host or some vector or inanimate environment okay so this is the definition of infectious diseases communicable diseases all right so this was the first part of it now here we have start uh, written something about host okay so let us just quickly see a few definitions for host you you're often asked that what is this host so host is someone susceptible host is someone who's going to uh, get the disease okay so for the host you usually ask the types of hosts okay so what could be the types of hosts we are just trying to understand the definition that um, you know could be asked to you so one is you could have a definitive host okay and the other is you could have an intermediate host okay so what is death this is a favorite mcq question also or important uh, viva question they ask in your entrance uh, in your uh, practical examination so what is definitive host definitive host is nothing but the host that harbors okay the host that harbors an agent okay in what in the mature or in a sexually active phase okay so what is a definitive host definitive host is a host that harbors the agent in its sexually active phase okay and what is in in determine in intermediate host okay so intermediate host is nothing but a host that harbors the agent in a larvae stage okay or a sexual developmental stage please remember this you must know infectious diseases are diseases that are being transmitted from infected person or animal to a susceptible host now that host could either be a definitive host or intermediate host definitive host it's a straight mcq question they ask you uh, that the host that harbors an agent in a sexually active phase is definitive host intermediate host dead end host anything they can give you so definitive host harbors the agent in a sexually active phase all right and intermediate host is the host that harbors the agent in a asexual uh, that harbors its asexual development stage okay so the, these could be asked to you now another thing that you heard in the definition if you see is through an inter uh, to a susceptible host either directly or indirectly through an intermediate plant or animal host or vector now this word you will often be seeing vector so let's quickly see that what is the definition of a vector okay vector i've seen students getting very confused and they do not know what exactly to write okay so let me first put the definition for you okay so the definition is when the transmission of an agent is intermediated by an arthropod okay we'll also be seeing this in types of infectious diseases okay so when the transmission of an agent is intermediated by an arthropod all right this arthropod is called a vector okay when the transmission of an infectious agent from one person to another is being done via an arthropod 
that is called a vector okay these vectors or these arthropods most commonly are mosquitoes okay so when what happens like you know for malarial parasite it gets transmitted from one person to another by the bite of a uh, by the bite of a mosquito anopheles mosquito okay so that anopheles is a vector all right so this is very important just so that you know now this vector all right the vector may you know may be simply mechanical this is again important the types of vectors kya hote hain they may simply be mechanical okay mechanical vectors means that they merely okay they merely carry the agent okay that accidentally contaminated it the, these come as an mcq okay so they may be mechanical vectors they simply carry the agent that accidentally contaminated it okay or it could be biological biological vectors kya hote hain when the infectious agent okay when the infectious agent obligatory obligatorily requires the vector to pass from one phase to another okay in its development all right so vector is something vector is nothing but you know when the but something that allows the transmission of an agent okay so when the transmission of an agent is intermediated by an arthropod this arthropod is called a vector i just gave you an example of transmission of malaria now these vectors could be of two type they could be mechanical they could be biological mechanical is that okay accidentally the vector got contaminated and the vector carries the agent biological is very important because it requires the vector okay the infectious agent obligatorily requires the vector to pass from one phase to another in its development okay <clears throat> so this is very important now another one thing that i would want all of you to know is something that you get confused what is reservoir of infection okay reservoir of infection what do we understand by reservoir of infection <clears throat> okay so reservoir of infection means let me put it down for you first it is nothing but the primary source of infection okay it's a primary source of infection in which the infectious agent okay finds condition finds conditions all right that permit to survive okay and multiply and from where it can be transmitted to another susceptible host okay so what is the reservoir of infection it is nothing but the primary source of infection okay in which the infectious agent it's a source of infection in which the infectious agent finds conditions that permit or that allow the infectious agent to survive and multiply and from where it can be transmitted to another susceptible host okay so this was the first part where we simply talked about what is an infectious disease is what is an infectious disease a little about what is the meaning of host what is the meaning of um, a vector and what is the meaning of reservoir of infection <clears throat> now Uh, a little about epidemiology okay so in of infectious diseases earlier infectious diseases uh, globally they used to be a leading cause of death earlier okay uh, tb 
smallpox syphilis tb cholera they had consumed millions of lives okay but now what happened that uh, uh, yeah in 1918 we had an influenza pandemic okay that consumed millions of lives of people but because of you know advances in nutrition sanitation immunization okay uh, food safety you know, all these because of advantage advances in our healthcare delivery system particularly uh, advances in nutrition sanitation immunization food safety and all this there has been a drastic decline in infectious diseases and now we all know that um, there is a concept of epidemiological transition that's occurring which we'll be discussing in detail when we study non communicable diseases because of that epidemiological transition earlier where infectious diseases were a major cause of death or were a major cause of disability or burden of disease now it has shifted to uh, non communicable diseases right our lifestyle related disorders okay so but still infectious disease today are um uh, are among the top 10 uh, there are certain diseases like resp uh, lower respiratory tract infection diarrheal diseases all these are like the leading causes of death still today all right so we need to manage um infectious diseases and there are certain infectious diseases like ebola or coronavirus which is occurring now they you know these diseases also sprung up all of a sudden and infect millions of people so even though there has been a decline in infectious diseases we still need to you know tackle these infectious diseases okay so now the second part is what happens okay my question to you is what happens okay what happens with infection okay or what happens when a person gets infected okay what happens when a person gets infected okay how does it turn to to a disease see it's very simple when an organism enters into your body if your immunity is good you will fight the organism okay but if suppose uh, your immune immune system is weak okay you go on to develop the disease all right now that immune system could be weak maybe because you're suffering from some other chronic illness maybe because you're taking some drug or maybe because your nutrition system is not good or you're not vaccinated immunized all right so there are a lot of causes so when an infectious agent enters your body either you will get the disease because your immune system is weak or you will not get the disease because your immune system is good okay now what also happens is that um sometimes what happens is that um, suppose you've never had that disease earlier okay then also there are chance of you getting the disease okay so that is very important that um either you've never had the disease before so you might get the infection or you've never been vaccinated before then also you might get the infection so whatever way it is it all depends on your immune system okay so immunity has a very strong role to play and we've already discussed in our previous lectures the various types of immunities okay so you should know about this now the first term that comes to a mind is a very important term that you must have heard is incubation period okay so what is incubation period we are now going to see certain important terminologies okay that uh, we come across when we are studying infectious diseases three you've already seen host vector reservoir of infection now what is incubation period okay incubation period is very important it's nothing but the time from when okay someone gets infected okay to when symptoms start okay so this is infectious period uh, in uh, incubation period it's the time between when a person gets infected and the first appearance of a clinical sign or symptom that is incubation period now <clears throat> this is for a infectious disease or a communicable disease similarly for a non communicable disease this incubation period is represented by a term which is known as latent period please remember this okay this is very important okay incubation period is represented by a term which is known as latent period in cases of non communicable disease okay so this is very important then you have something so this was the first point that we discussed terms um another term that could be asked to you is infectious period or the period of communicability okay so what is infectious period 
इन्फेक्शियस पीरियड क्या होता है इट इज़ नथिंग बट द टाइम वेन ओके द टाइम वेन इन्फेक्टेड पर्सन ओके कैन स्प्रेड द डिजीज ओके एंड इन्फेक्ट अदर्स सो इट इज द टाइम वेन द इन्फेक्टेड पर्सन ओके कैन स्प्रेड द डिजीज एंड कैन इन्फेक्ट अदर्स दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द पीरियड ऑफ कम्युनिकेबिलिटी all right so this is very important um what happens is that this time when the infected person can spread the disease and infect others is a time when necessarily he might not be showing any symptoms but he is still infecting the disease so usko koi he is not displaying or he is not portraying any symptoms or signs but he is still infecting the disease so someone who is still infecting the disease although is not he or she is not displaying any sign or symptom is known as these people are known as carriers of a disease so this is very important again okay carriers of a disease okay so carriers of a disease are people who might be spreading the disease infecting the others but they are not necessarily they may not show the symptoms okay so necessarily not showing the symptoms okay so they are known as carriers infectious period is simply the time when an infected person can spread the disease and infect others it is also known as period of communicability okay now another important uh, term that we come across is case fatality okay case fatality rate now i have already told you in my epidemiology lecture also about it when we were discussing about rate ratio proportion what is case fatality rate it is very simple what is it going to measure case fatality if suppose a disease occurs how many people die due to that disease simple okay so what is it measuring it measures the severity of disease okay in other words what is this it is nothing but the proportion of people okay who die after infection okay suppose um if you take a case of suppose 10 cases of tb occurred okay and six people died so what would be my case fatality rate number of people who died upon the total people who were infected so it is 10 into please remember it is actually a proportion because the multiplier is 100 so it will be 60% i have already taught you this even though we write case fatality rate okay but it's not actually a rate because in this we have the multiplier as 100 so it becomes a proportion okay so case fatality rate we have understood all right okay next very important is another term that is known as basic reproduction okay rate this is very important what does it measure this is a measure of how infectious okay how infectious a disease is is measured by basic reproduction rate okay how infectious that disease is how many infections will that disease be able to cause is known as basic reproduction rate or in the other definition for it is average number of secondary cases okay average number of secondary cases that occur as a result of the infected individual okay so we have one infected individual how many secondary cases will occur as a result of that infected individual is what is known as basic reproduction rate okay it tells us about how infectious a disease is okay so suppose measles if we take an example measles for measles the basic reproduction rate is 15 what does this 15 signify it signifies that one case of measles okay one case of measles can cause up to 15 other cases of measles okay this is very important theek hai one case of measles would be able to cause up to 15 other cases of measles okay so this is a measure of basic reproduction rate 
all right so this is very important that it's it's simply it tells us about how infectious the disease is okay there is another term which is important when we study about um, infectious disease any guesses have already told you also i think in some some place in epidemiology yes it is secondary attack rate ठीक है सेकेंडरी अटैक रेट और राइट सो वॉट इज सेकेंडरी अटैक रेट सेकेंडरी अटैक रेट इज नथिंग बट द मेजर ऑफ इन्फेक्शियसनेस ओके इट इज द मेजर ऑफ इन्फेक्शियसनेस और स्प्रेड ऑफ डिजीज ठीक है जैसे केस फर्टेलिटी रेट इज अ मेजर ऑफ द सीवियरिटी ऑफ द डिजीज ओके सेकेंडरी अटैक रेट इज सिंपली अ मेजर ऑफ इन्फेक्शियसनेस और स्प्रेड ऑफ द डिजीज ओके इट्स नॉट सी इट्स सिंपली अ मेजर ऑफ द पोटेंशियल ऑफ स्प्रेड ऑफ द डिजीज ओके सो देर इज अनादर डेफिनेशन ऑफ दिस इट इज दैट प्रपोर्शन ऑफ पीपल हु are exposed to disease okay proportion of people who are exposed to a disease get the disease suppose in a community 100 people are exposed to the disease but only 10 get the disease okay so that is very important uh, okay suppose if we say that for influenza okay the secondary attack rate is 10% what does this mean okay this means that one out of every 10 susceptible people okay one out of every 10 susceptible people exposed to a influenza case okay will develop the infection okay so secondary attack rate is that um, you know proportion of people who are exposed to the disease get the disease if we say it is 10 it simply means that if 10 people are exposed to influenza one out of every 10 susceptible people exposed to an influenza case will develop the disease so this is secondary attack rate it is a measure of spread of the disease okay don't get confused with basic reproduction rate okay basic reproduction rate simply tells us how infectious a disease is okay it's not telling us about the spread but it's telling us how infectious a disease is okay average number of secondary cases that result that occur as a result of as a result of the infected individual okay so this is very uh, very very important and secondary attack rate is a simply it's a measure of infectiousness or spread of the disease okay so these were a few terms that you should know okay now let's come to the next part which is the types of um, or the categories of infectious disease okay infectious disease ठीक है इन्फेक्शियस डिजीजेस कैटेगरी सो वन वी हैव वेरी कॉमन यू विल बी हियरिंग इट अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम जूनोटिक डिजीजेस ओके सो वॉट इज जूनोटिक डिजीजेस सिंपल डिजीजेस ट्रांसमिटेड फ्रॉम एनिमल्स टू ह्यूमन्स ओके सो वॉट आर जूनोटिक डिजीज डिजीज ऑफ एनिमल्स ठीक है विच वेन ट्रांसमिटेड टू ह्यूमन्स कैन कॉज डिजीज ओके सो सिंपल इट इज फ्रॉम एनिमल्स टू ह्यूमन्स प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस ओके ओवर सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ गाइज प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ ह्यूमन इन्फेक्शियस डिजीजेस are zoonotic okay like example uh, from a dog to a human what do what what occurs rabies okay this is very important certain other examples is uh, other than rabies it is leptospirosis from a rat okay 
uh, you also have toxoplasmosis you also have campylobacter okay so this comes as a unique question that uh, they ask you categorize the various types of infectious diseases the first is zoonotic disease disease of animals which when transmitted to humans can cause disease okay so this is very important then your other thing is other um, type is there is one very important it is emerging infectious disease okay so emerging infectious disease what is it it appears we call when do we call it as emerging infectious disease those diseases that appear for the first time okay in a population okay so appear for the first time so emerging infectious diseases could either be new diseases okay or what happens they may have existed previously okay so or may have existed previously okay but now they are increasing in incidence or geographical range okay so this is very important emerging infectious disease they appear for the first time in a population so they are new diseases or they might be existing previously but now they are increasing in incidence or geographical range okay so they are emerging infectious diseases some examples if somebody asks you it could be ebola virus it could be um, some new influenza strain okay okay it could be mers cov mers cov is middle east respiratory syndrome coronavirus okay so this is very important all right then what do we have after emerging infectious diseases you also have neglected tropical diseases this is very important okay what are neglected tropical diseases neglected tropical diseases is you know those group of diseases that affect the poorest of the countries in the world okay so they are group of tropical diseases okay that affect the poorest countries of the world okay <clears throat> they have not received attention yet but you know they continue to cause illness in the most vulnerable populations of the world okay so another point for this is that they have not received attention okay but what happens they have not received attention but they continue to cause illness in the most vulnerable groups of people in the world okay basically these are diseases that are associated with poor socio economic conditions okay poor conditions of living okay so these are diseases that are associated with poor conditions of living poor socio economic status poor sanitation and hygiene all right so they are such diseases so can you think of an example of such disease yes very important it is certain examples are like trachoma okay leishmaniasis so anybody can ask you that uh, they can give you an mcq that out of the following which one is a tropical disease or all of the following are tropical diseases except okay so you have leishmaniasis you have stosomiasis okay you also have sleeping sickness okay so this is very important these are about neglected tropical diseases then we also have vector borne diseases i've already told you about this or so arthropod borne diseases okay so what are vector borne diseases these are simply the diseases that are transmitted by the bite of a vector or we will put it as diseases transmitted okay from an infectious infected uh, human or animal okay to another person 
I told you through an intermediate arthropod or through the bite of a vector. This vector is also known as arthropod or arthropod bond diseases and these vectors, okay, these vectors could be what? These vectors most commonly are mosquitoes but they can also be flies, they can also be ticks, okay, they can also be um, fleas, they can also be snails, okay. And certain example of diseases that are caused uh, due to this is very important malaria we'll be discussing these malaria dengue okay chikungunya anything um, okay so these are the examples of uh, vector borne diseases and over 17% of infectious origin uh, if 17% of infectious diseases okay infectious diseases are vector borne diseases and they are responsible for almost 1 million deaths okay so this is very important these are certain types of diseases they can ask you you can have zoonotic disease emerging diseases tropical diseases you can also have about vector borne diseases so this is very very important okay uh, uh, so we've discussed about the definition the terms and we've also discussed about the categories of certain diseases now you might get a question that how are these basically infectious diseases spreading so we all know that uh, it is through epidemiological triad okay so we'll just quickly talk about the transmission of infectious diseases okay so transmission of infectious diseases how do they occur we know the concept about epidemiological triad right if you remember we've already discussed it now in epidemiological triad what do you have you have an interaction between agent host and environment okay agent i've already told you could be anything not necessarily um, bacteria viruses but since we're talking about um, infectious diseases agent in this case is going to be an organism okay and that organism could be bacteria virus fungi parasite whatever okay host is what host is simply the target of the disease okay target of the disease and environment is what environment is simply the surroundings okay that influence the occurrence of the disease okay suppose we talk about tb tb would occur tuberculosis would occur by an interaction between all these three okay so for tb my agent would be mycobacterium tuberculosis my host would be a person okay whose immunity is weak whose uh, nutritional conditions nutritional status is poor and environment could be poor overcrowding or um, uh, poor sanitation poor hygiene so all those would result in the occurrence of tuberculosis but how is this tuberculosis going to transmit or what are the modes of transmission i already told you we'll quickly see the modes of transmission of disease okay this is what i wanted to teach you modes of transmission of disease okay or infectious diseases so either we could have a direct transmission okay this is asked in first year university questions okay direct transmission or you could have indirect transmission so examples of direct transmissions are it could be the disease could transmit by direct contact or by droplet spread like a lot of infection uh, like a lot of respiratory illnesses or it could also spread by inoculation into skin or mucosa all right or it could also go by contact with soil or it could also be transplacental please remember this uh, what i'm teaching you this table because you need to put it down as answers in your university examinations okay or we can have indirect transmission so what is indirect transmission what are the examples of indirect transmission it could b vehicle born vehicle born it could be through food or water okay it could be vector born i already told you the vector could be um, the vector could be mechanical or biological okay 
also it could be fomite bond okay it could also be through unclean hands and fingers okay so these are certain examples of direct and indirect transmission of disease all right so this sums up our first part of infectious diseases where we've tried to understand if we just go back and have a look at what we tried to do in the first part yes we try to understand what is the definition of infectious disease simply they are infectious is an origin transmit from one person to the other um okay either directly or indirectly we've done the modes of transmission uh, directly what are the modes of transmission and what are the indirect modes of transmission they go to a susceptible host the host could be either definitive host or intermediate host i've already told you and one of the most important ways of transmission is vector so what is a vector we've already discussed what is the reservoir of infection we've discussed what happens when a person gets infected either the person will get the infection or he will survive the infections okay that depends on your immunity so that we've already done we've discussed some terms like incubation period um infectious period or period of communicability what is case fatality rate very important what is basic reproduction rate what is secondary attack rate all right and we discussed about infectious diseases category like we have what is zoonotic disease okay we have what is emerging infections we did something about neglected tropical diseases what are vector borne diseases okay and then we lastly did what is the transmission how is this transmission occurring now in the next video we'll try to cover the respiratory infections in detail